Well, hello, 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 everybody. It's your meadow hair for the day. And, oh, wow. Yes, that's right. This is a video. It is a video. And I'm sure you're very surprised by this. Because I haven't been on here in a long time. Actually, in about a month. Over a month. You know why? Because school has been kicking my butt over the last, well, that long couple months. But now I'm finally done with it, and I actually have spare time now. So I figured, hey, why not get started doing some more videos on YouTube again? I'm sure you guys miss me. You're probably actually kind of mad at me. That's okay. Because now I'm actually back and posting videos. So, as you probably saw from the title of the video up there somewhere, this is about one Sketchy's 360 shooting gallery engine, which is probably one of the most useful, if not the most useful thing I've ever downloaded about Multimedia Fusion 2. And it's about other useful commands that I just thought I'd show you guys while we had time. So let's get started here. This, um, well, let's just run the application. So, this has some incredibly incredibly useful things on it but it also has some very advanced techniques and equations for example just in that thing Ooh, wait actually I should show it to you first if you click slow rotation up here check out what happens do you see that it rotates like fairly smoothly and there is no like no detectors or anything this is all just one equation and let me show it to you um, you ready? Because it's quite a, um, it's quite imposing. Here we go. Boom. This is the equation for that rotation. Now, I went and deciphered this and actually figured out how, like, what it all meant and stuff. It's probably one of the the most hard and it's one of the most difficult equations I've ever had to decipher. And it's not really necessary that you understand it as long as you can write it out but it would be good if you did understand. But anyway, let's just move on. This thing obviously has many um, assets, many different frames with different parts, different equations, different techniques. And I'm just going to run it through all of them, and you know you can freeze frame it if you want to read all this stuff. But this one, it just follows the mouse. If you hold down the click, if you hold down the left button on the mouse, it'll shoot. Check this, and it will rotate after the mouse. And you can actually change... Alright, one more thing before I run through it. You can change the turn rate. Let's just change it to 3 as a quick example. And it'll rotate slightly faster at about 3 degrees per frame. Pretty sweet, huh? But it gets better. Because now he has, in the next frame, this. Ricocheting bullets off of walls. And needless to say many of you probably want to know how to do this stuff and this just basically shows you how the events are fully commented it's like all credit goes to sketchy for this I put or I will put the link up to it in the description because I know you're gonna want to download this but he is just darn amazing at multimedia fusion 2 and I hope to aspire to his greatness one day this one just has a little target that follows the mouse up to a certain point, and the bullets are slightly less accurate. They'll kind of spread around and stuff. Next frame. Now, this one will be very useful for some of you guys, because it has a specific weapon, which you can choose by pressing 1, 2, or 3, Uzi, pistol, and shotgun. And the pistol has a reload time. You can hold the mouse and click it and it'll shoot until it runs out of bullets and it'll have a reloading time. And you have unlimited rounds of this pistol, which would be useful if you're making a game like, I don't know, just any shooter game, you want to have an un unlimited weapon. But Uzi does not have unlimited, it has 30 bullets per round. When it's done, it has to reload just like the other one. And you start losing rounds as you, you know, use the bullets. And when you're out, you're out. And no more reloading. And there you go. Shotgun, you only get two bullets. It has to reload very often. Moving on. This one. Oh, wow. 
I'm sure you guys want to know how to do this, right? This is using many fast loops and is very hard on the processor of a computer, but it looks awesome. You hold down the mouse when you're pointing toward a wall, it'll make a bullet instantly appear against the wall, like an instant laser. And if you hit the right click, you do this. A laser that'll just extend and hit the wall, and there you go. This is probably one of the most hard things to do on a processor. It is very graphically um, demanding, and it can cause a lot of slowdown if you make the laser too um, too elaborate. So use this one sparingly. Moving on. This is something quite amazing. You want to make a game like Worms, where you have like the different powers of different weapons and destructible terrain? We'll look no further. Here you go. This was quite impressive to me when I saw it. And and you can see why. You can just destroy everything. The bullets will rotate perfectly. You can shoot them way off the screen if you want to. So this is pretty fun just to mess around with. Now this... Okay. This is really impressive. It has multiple objects that rotate slowly. They'll all rotate toward you, and they'll shoot at you when you're in within range and when they're looking at you close enough. Really advanced, really just amazing AI programming there. And of course they'll shoot you, and pretty self-explanatory. This one has a bunch of different objects that they're all shooting at. This one doesn't require any interaction from me, but they're all shooting at the closest one of these to them. So if one gets closer, like, sometimes you'll see them snap like that, or they'll just they'll be shooting at one boom, then they'll switch and start shooting at that one. Really quite amazing. A lot of code. Very, very, very involved. And here we are back at the beginning. So, don't delay. Go out and download this today because you will not regret it. Thank you very, very, very much, Sketchy, for a wonderful tool, and we will all give you much credit for this, because you deserve it. Thank you again. So, that's that. Um, now, on to this little thing I have here. I wanted to show you guys some useful commands. Max and min, and floor and ceiling, and just how to make something move t in one direction with just one equation, no greater, less than nonsense. So here we have a bunch of counters, and the first one I want to show you is maximum and minimum, which is looks something like this. You have an equation here, this big counter will always, sorry, this counter will always show, or will all, well, let me just, okay. <laughs> This is the equation. I'm using max right now, which means the big counter will always change to the maximum between these two, meaning if one counter is higher than the other, this big counter will be the highest value. Actually, it's easier to show than to say... Alright, so this thing's just going to follow the mouse, but if I press left, that counter will increase. If I press right, the left counter will increase. I don't know why I did it that way, but I did. But as soon as that counter becomes higher than the other one, the big counter will turn to that counter on the left. The one on the right surpasses the one on the left, turns to that one. So this can be really useful if you want to do something like that in your game, so you have like a health bar or something. Well, another practical application is if, say you want an enemy to take damage from something, or... Well, it's hard to explain, but... When you want something to not be set, like for example in my game there's a screen shaking equation where the magnitude determines how much the screen should shake. If it's 6, the screen shakes 6 pixels around. If it's 2, it shakes 2 pixels. Well, sometimes you have the screen shaking like 10 pixels and then an enemy dies that makes an explosion and it is set to make the screen shake only 2 pixels because the enemy's small. Well, that can be really awkward if it's shaking a lot, and then all of a sudden an enemy dies and it just stops shaking, because it's set it such, at such a low value. Well, with this, you can say when the enemy dies, set it to the maximum between 
2, which is the enemy's set uh, magnitude value, or what the value is already. And it'll choose and say, okay, well this is 2, let's see if this value that it already is is higher. And if it is, it'll set it to the max, which means it won't set it back to 2, it'll set it to what it already is hope I explained that well, but it's really useful for things like that. And of course, as you'd probably guess, minimum is the opposite. When you do this, it'll always set it to the lowest value. So no matter how high this value goes, it will always be zero because the other one is zero. The so minute that one starts going up, it'll be that one until it surpasses the other one, and then it'll just stay at the lowest one. So I'm sure you can think of your own practical application to that. Alright, now floor and ceiling. This is uh, quite interesting. So what floor does is it always rounds the number down from the value that you're paying attention to. For example, I have this, I'm pointing it with my finger, that's not going to do much. This thing always increases by a decimal of 0 0.1. And as you can see, those values up there are just kind of, they're being rounded up to a whole number. But the ceiling one, which is this one, will always go round it up. So if it's 10.3, it'll round it up to 11. It'll stay 11 all the way up until it goes to 11.1 or something above that, then round up to 12. This one will always round down. This is the floor value. And so if it's 11.9 even, or even 12, it'll round it down to the previous number. See, this one's 14, that one's 13. So that can be useful because you can also whoops, did not, did not mean to do that, can say, let's just do this, whoops, typing with one hand because I'm holding a microphone, uh, let's just say times six, and this one, we'll just leave that on its own. Now, that one will round up and multiply it by six, so that you have this smooth progression no matter what the decimal point is, the other one is just now doing its own thing. And of course the last thing I want to show you is this little circle thing which you've seen following the mouse this whole time is just this one equation. It's kind of the same thing we use in our gravity and other equations. This is the x of the follower minus the x of mouse divided by the same thing, x of the follower divided by mouse, and that will either yield um, positive one or negative one. And of so, you don't need any values, no nothing, just that equation, it'll just follow. And of course, you can do this with the y value as well. You just do that real quick. And it'll just follow. It's not the best, because it doesn't use any loops, and it can go past certain things when you don't want it to. But, in a pinch, if you're just looking for something really simple, then, shoot, why not do this? Alright, so changing all that should, yep, there it goes. Two equations. You just have this thing that follows pretty much perfectly. Kind of jerky, but, you know, it can do in a pinch, like I said. So, that's it, really, for today. I just wanted to share something with you guys. just wanted to make a video, really, because I haven't in so long. So, that's really been it. Um, hope you guys have been doing alright over the time that I've been gone. And, um, I will hopefully be getting to that enemy AI thing soon. <laughs> which you guys have been waiting for for far too long. But I, you know, I finally figured it out, and I think I'm ready to post the video. So, look for that coming up soon, and I will see you all later. This has been that guy over there, one, two, three, or Meadow Hair, depending on what you want to call me. I prefer Meadow Hair, but call me whatever you want. And... I will follow you guys to the point of making videos right there. See, I just followed. Anyway, enough babbling on. I'll see you guys later in the next video. Hope you have a great day. And, yeah.
Nice to be back. See you all later.